By the Kosas Master Sri Guru Nanak, we have been discussing now for the, the fourth day the glories of Sri Hari Nam. Sri Rupa Goswami Pad, realizing the nectar of the holy name, said, "Tunde itanda mani ratin bitano te itanga vali." Abdaye kana kroda kadambini gatayate kana abadebe aspriham chito prangana sangini vijayate savende anam kritim no jane janita kyadbe ramritai krishne tivarna dvai. Ah, I don't know how much nectar these two syllables, krish and na, have produced unlimited nectar. When this name appears, it's dancing on my tongue. 
He's not saying, I am chanting. <laughs> no, now Prabhu is appearing and dancing on my tongue. Huh? I am not in control of this. And at that time, then I want millions and millions of tongues. One tongue is not enough to taste how sweet this name is. Then, when the sound of the name goes in my ear, then two ears, this is better, have one tongue but two ears, this is an improvement. But still, two ears are not enough. I want millions and millions of ears. And then, when this name, through the ear, goes, and then he dances in the courtyard of my heart. That means the Krishna. That's his beautiful, sweet form, and he's dancing there, and all my senses become conquered, inert. Then he goes into samadhi. So how much nectar is in this name? So if we are not tasting this nectar, then we should be very worried and very concerned. Why not? Why not? So the reason is ten types of nam aparad. How can one become free from nam aparad? Firstly, one should consider them very carefully, each and every one. And then, one should try to avoid it very, very carefully. And to lament over past offenses. And then one should petition the Holy Name. Please forgive me with many prayers. So for this, our Acharyas have written many prayers to the Holy Name. So that we can petition Nam Prabhu to give mercy to us. So Sri Rupa Goswami Pad, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapatam Yena Bhutale, he is the person who established the mission to fulfill the innermost heart desires of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this world. Vridi Yasya Pranavaraka Rupa Pi Tasya Parakamalam Pandit Chaitanya Devasya. Rupa Goswami Pad said, What I am writing is not my writing. But I bow down to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And though I am insignificant and unqualified, and I am not eloquent, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has Ridiya Syak Pranaya, he has inspired this into my heart. So Srila Rupa Goswami Pad has manifested his uh, Sri Krishna Namastakam. Eight verses praying and glorifying Sri Hari Nam Prabhu. So we want to discuss. Uh, this prayer of Srila Rupa Goswami Pad this evening. Actually, if you have, we can put it on the screen. So we touched on some of the points from this because they were just rising spontaneously during the other lectures. So in the first verse, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad is saying, Nikila Sruti Moli Ratna Mahala Juti Nira Jita Tava Panka Janta Ai Mukti Kula Upasimana Parchastam Harinama Sangsrayami Nikala Sruti Mauli. It means Nikala means all. Sruti means the Vedas. And Mauli means the crest jewels. That means the mantras of the Upanishads, which have the mm, highest knowledge of the Vedas are there. So they are like jewels. And they have come together in the mala like a jeweled garland. And there is a light of transcendental knowledge emanating from those jewels of the Upanishads. And by that light, they are worshipping, offering arti to the Tava Panka Janta. Hmm? Bada means foot, Panka means lotus, and Ja means born. What is born from the lotus foot? That means the toenails. Toenails are growing. So the the light emanating from the highest jewels of the Vedas are in a garland and by their effulgence they are doing puja to the tips of the toenails of Harinam. So the meaning is Abhinatvam Nama Namino. This name is Krishna himself. Moli, the word Moli can also mean chief. So the chief of the Vedas, that means the Vedas have uh, two forms. They have Devarup and the Shabdarup, form of sound of the Vedas and Devarup, they have personified forms. So you can see in chapter uh, 87 of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Sruti Stuti, the prayers of the Vedas personified. So it means those personified forms of the Vedas, there 
worshipping the tips of the toes of Harinam. Why? Nibrita maron manoksya dhuta yoga yujori diyan. Munaya apasri tad haryopi yoyos maranat. Stuya urugendu boga bujidanda visakta diya. Vayama pichasavha samadrishangri saroja sudha. You can see in the Shruti Stuti, prayers of the Vedas, they say, Oh, there are many tapasvis, yogis and jnanis, and they do hard austerities to control their senses, their mind and their pran. And by this, gradually, gradually, it may be possible, in some rare cases, if there's also a touch of bhakti, then they may get mukti, liberation. Because jnana and yoga, they, they are lame. They have no potency unless at least the touch of bhakti is there. So those persons, they may get mukti liberation, impersonal liberation, surya mukti. But, munaya munayopi arayos maranat, the enemies of Krishna, they also get that same liberation. So what's the use of the, all that sadhana? They're wasting their time. Why are they dedicating their life with very hard austerities to get something that demons who hate Krishna get also? Liberation. So the Vedas are saying, we never recommend these things. Why do you think this is recommended in the Vedas? Gyan, karma, yoga, tapasya, pranayama, all these things. No, no, we're not recommending these things. The sutis, the nikila mole, the crest jewels of the Vedas, Upanishads. We're not recommending these things. Then what are you re recommending? They are in transcendental Brandavan. They are gopis. And those gopis, they are always remembering the snake-like arms of Sri Krishna. Krishna's arms. Why are they saying Bhujadanda Visakta? The gopis' minds are attached to the snake-like arms of Sri Krishna. Why? Because the snake is uh, quite thick and then gradually becomes tapering like this. And they're very smooth and round. So Krishna's arms are long and very smooth and round. Not like uh, biceps, triceps and veins popping out everywhere. Eh? Like this. Very, very smooth and beautiful. Look, Radha Raman. Oh, you can't see his arms. But isn't he the strongest person? Yeah, of course. So his arms are very smooth and also very cool. And also, no one actually makes a plan to be embraced by a snake. The snake is just hanging in the tree and no one sees him and then some person who is walking along uh, and then unwittingly they walk beneath that branch of the tree and the bison drops down and grabs them. And then that person is fighting. Stop, stop, stop. But they cannot win and the snake overpowers them. So this is why gopis think Krishna's arms are like snakes. And they deliberately they say, I'm just going to fetch water. And they go to the forest with the pot and they're hoping that Krishna by surprise will jump out and catch them. And then they'll say, no, no, no. Ma sprisha, ma sprisha. Ma, ma sprisha. You know? Ma sprisha means don't touch. So they say, ma, ma sprisha. That means don't, don't touch. <laughs> so all the Vedas, ah, they said, vayamma picha samasama drishangri saroja sudha. That, and uh, we have attained the perfection of our life by absorbing our minds, following in the moods of the gopis of Brandavan. Samadrisha, seeing in the same way means to be in the Anugatya of Braja Gopis. Hmm? So the Veda is personified by uh, chanting and remembering and following in the footsteps of Braja Gopis. They attained uh, Gopi Swarups and they went to the Rasavila. So, Ayamuktukula Upasamanam. Oh, Nam Prabhu, all the great liberated souls, they constantly, the Mukta Kul, don't think that you chant Harinam here and then when you're liberated you don't do this. Harinam is Sadhya and Sadhana, practice and the goal as well. Sadhya Sat Mapu told, Sadhya Sadhana Tattva Jai Kichus Sakal, Harinam Asankirtane Milibe Sakal. Whatever is there, whatever tattoos, whatever truths are there about sadhana and about sadhya as well. All of these are together in Harinam Sankirtan. Mm -hmm. Gopis themselves are singing the names of Krishna in Rasa Lila. So everything is there in Harinam Sankirtan up to the uh, uh, 
not up to liberation, up to liberation and beyond, forever. Juti Nidra Jita Tavapang Kajanta. One very interesting thing about offering arti. Hmm? You know, when you offer arti, then when you, afterwards, then you take the, the wicks and you throw them away. So those Vedas personified, they had forms as Vedas personified. But they left this and took gopi swarups to serve Krishna. But they upasyamana, but still they continued with kirtan. So then a question arises. Oh, so Parjastvam Harinam Sangsrayami. So, oh Harinam, not Asrayami, Sangsrayami. I take complete shelter of you. Not Ashrami, Sangsrayami. Complete shelter. That means that my whole life is dedicated only to serving you. He reasons ill that say that Vaishnavas die when thou art living still in sound. A Vaishnav dies to live and living tries to spread the holy name around. Hmm? So you can see the example of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He said, Nadia, Nadia, go through Benitananda Majan. Nityanandabu was opened the marketplace of the holy name in Surabi Kunj, in Godrum Dweep. So Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur said, What is my position? I am just a sweeper in the marketplace of the holy name. That means that when the living entities they try to understand spiritual life, then Kali Kala Balina Indriya Vairi Vaga. Sri Bhakti Marga Kanta Virutha Kanta Kanta Kakoti Rutha. The path of Bhakti in this age of Kali is covered with so many thorns. Sri Bhakti Mara. Here Kanta Kakoti Rutha. So when a person tries to enter spiritual life, oh, many problems come. Eh? Sometimes devotees may wonder, before I was a devotee, it wasn't so bad, and then I became a devotee, ah, now I have so many problems. Hmm? Things that I didn't have to deal with before. So sometimes it's like that. Many thorns have come in Kali Yuga on this path of Bhakti. But Srila Bhakti Nautakur said, I am a sweeper in the marketplace of the Holy Name. That means I am, by my teachings and by my followers, those who are in the Vinod Dhara, sweeping and removing the thorns from the path, so that everyone can very smoothly and comfortably enter into the marketplace of the Holy Name. So many thoughts. Sahajabad, Sahajamud, Sakibeki, all the different Apasampradayas. Aula Baal Gauranga, Aula Baal Nada, Dairavesha Sai, Sahaja Sakibeti, Jatko Sai, Ati bari chure dhani gauranga nagari toti kari e terasangi nahi kari Never associate with 13 types of apasampradayas the Aul, the Baal, the Nera, the Daravesha all these Sahaja, Sakibaki and so on They cover the path of Bhakti with thorns but Srila Bhakti Nautaka said I am the sweeper in the marketplace of the Holy Name removing the thorns and our Param Gurudev Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshimachi prayed when will I become one straw in the broom of Srila Bhakti Thakur? So this is the meaning. Hari Nama Sangsrayami. To take complete shelter of the Holy Name is not only to chant the Holy Name when you are chanting Japa and doing Hari Nama Sankirtan, but in the time which is left over, completely dedicate your life to the Namahata, making programs in people's homes everywhere. Now one may say, this name is so wonderful and beautiful, but I am so sinful, how can I attain it? So to answer this question, Rupa Goswami Pad gave the second verse. Jai nama deya muni brenda geya jana ranjanaya paramakshrakate tomanatarak apimanaga diritam nikilo grata papata limbilumpasi. Jai nam, oh glories to Nam Prabhu. Srila Bhakti Nautakura in his commentary on this, it means, he says it means, Jai nam means, in this whole world, you are my only friend. Jai Namadeya Muni Brindagaya. All the Munis, 
the great sages, those who do manan, that means who are absorbed in meditation on the Askali Lila of Radha and Krishna, Lord Shiva, Shukadeva Goswami, and more, Rupa Goswami himself, Sanatana Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Vishwatavi Thakur, all the great uh, persons who are absorbed in meditation, how do they meditate? They sing the holy name and their meditation comes automatically. Only bring the gear. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there it is said, Srila Vishnu Chakitakura, he writes, Smarna Prayatnaha Shravana Kirtanavato Bhaktasya Navasaka. For the devotee who is engaged in, in Kirtan, Shravana and Kirtan, hearing and chanting, then he does not have to make any effort at all to do smaran. Smarana Prayatnaha means the effort to do smaran. Shravana Kirtanavato Bhaktasya. For the devotee who is absorbed in hearing and chanting. Huh? Narasaka? Not necessary. Directly he wrote this. In his commentary on one verse, what is it? Srimitam Sadhada Nityam Gridantasya Chachestitam. Dirge na natikale na. Vishate Bhagavan Hari. In the, let's see. Shukadev Goswami Pat says, for those who are engaged in hearing and chanting, when taking it very seriously, then the Supreme Lord enters into that person's heart. You see? So those who are taking this hearing and chanting very seriously, making it their whole life, whose whole life is a worshipping every word coming from the lips of Gurudev, and chanting, remembering all these things, then for that person, Krishna just comes and manifests in their heart, and that's Marana. That's remembrance. Real hearing is darshan. If you're not seeing, you're not hearing. Real kirtan is darshan. If you're not seeing Krishna, you have not done kirtan yet. And smaran is darshan also. So smarana prayatna, shravana kirtan avato bhaktasya navasyaka. So muni brindagaya, the munis who have the, they are munis, they do manan, they're absorbed in meditation. But how are they meditating? Brinda Gaya, by singing the holy names. Janaranjana Paramakshakate. Oh, you have appeared to give joy to your devotees. Even if Namabas will begin to come, then Sri Krishna will begin to reveal his beauty and sweetness. We discussed that on the second day. Do you remember the verse that the Vishnu Dutz told the Yamadutz? Na niskrita udita brahmavadibi Tata vishudyakta gavan bratadibi Yata hare nama podair udaritais Tad uttama shloka gunopalam bakam The Vishnu dude said to the Yamadus ah, If someone will just utter the name Even not with proper concentration even not the whole name, just a part of it. Then, if there's no offense, they will be completely, they will have done atonement for all kinds of sins forever. And, Tad Uttama Sloka Gunopalambakam, the qualities, the gun, the qualities of Krishna will manifest in their heart. Krishna Chavitakur in the commentary says specifically, Krishna's gun, his attributes, his aishwarya, his opulence and powers, and his madhurya, his sweetness. And they will rise because of the gradual appearance of brain. Love is coming. So Janaranjanaya, Nam is giving so much pleasure to those who are chanting. Paramaksharakite. Par Paramaksha what is the form of this Nam? Akshara. Syllables. Ha, Re, Krishna. Don't make it complicated. Rupa Goswami Party is saying that the holy name is appeared in the form of syllables. Some person sometimes, Harinam Nikapanam, they give some imaginary interpretation of the name. Uh, well, it's not exactly the name, but it's the, something inside the name or something like this. No, Paramakshara Akrite. It is the syllables. Krishna has taken Akshara akrit, Akrita Akar. Akar means form. So Akrite means, you. Uh, oh, you have taken the form of Akshara, syllables. Ha, Re, Krishna. 
we are just uh, told the verse of Rupa Goswami, I don't know how much nectar is in these two syllables, Krishna. So then Rupa Goswami is saying, Tamanadara Dapimanag Diritam. Even if a person, he says this name, Anadar, without any faith, without any honor at all, Apimanag means even just a little bit. Or oh, one time, Udiritam, he utters this, then Nikilogra tapa patalim vilum pasi. Nikil means all, oh, Ugra tapa. Terrible sufferings. Patalim means a, a great abundance. So a great abundance of terrifying sufferings that vilum pasi or oh, Namprabhu, you destroy them all. So the first touch of Harina. First touch of Nama Bas, it destroys all your karma, past, present and future. But that may not be aware to the person at that time. And all the subtleties of that, remember we discussed the various nuances of that on the second day. In the commentary, Baldevi Dibhushan and uh, Prabhu and uh, Sila Bhaktinotakor, they define this Ugratapa Patali the abundance, the mountain of the ferocious suffering, they describe that as all kinds of suffering up to and including the linga sharir, your subtle body. Because the subtle body is the cause of all of our sufferings. Having this body is not the cause of suffering. The problem is the subtle body. My intelligence, ego and chitta is contaminated and all types of impressions from many many lifetimes are stored there and those impressions are causing us to engage in various types of worldly activities and entangling us again and again so for the devotee who has who is chanting then he's a subtle body here vilumpasi or nam prabhu you destroy the subtle body of your devotee mm -hmm. and then though the devotee is still in this world he has no suffering In Silla Bhaktanathaku's comment, he said, Lenga banga hoi anayase, without any effort. He said, very easily now, without any effort, Lenga bang. That means your ling, the, the subtle body, finished. Then there's no more suffering at all. Now, in the third verse, very beautiful. And the commentaries are all wonderful on this verse. Um, the third verse, Someone may say, so is, is that the limit of the uh, benefit of Nam Abbas? Rupa Goswami says, no, no, there's more. Nam Abbas is even more glorious. But what I want to tell you is something which is avicintya. It is not achintya, it's avicintya. Not only inconceivable, it is excessively, especially and intensely inconceivable that even very, very learned scholars, they cannot guess, they cannot understand, they cannot imagine what I'm about to say. So Rupa Goswami is saying, Yada baso kavalita bhavadvanta vibhavo dasham tattvanda nam apidishti bhakti pradainim tinastasyoda tam jagati bhavan nama taranekti te nirvakta kahya mahimanam prabhavati Kriti in the last line, Kriti, it means pandits, scholars, Vigya. Very, very learned persons. Nirvaktam Kahya. Which scholars in this world are capable of Nirvaktam? That is, mm, articulating Mahimanam, your glories. Which great scholars are capable of articulating your glories? It's a, it's a rhetorical question. It means none. There aren't any unless and until they receive Upadesh, instruction from a Nam Tattvavit Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is Nam Tattvavit, who knows the mysteries and the glories of the Holy Name. Unless they will give Upadesh instruction, then even a great scholar, he cannot imagine what is the nature of Nam Prabhu. So, why is that? Yadava Sopilvan Kabalita when the devotee chants Nam Abbas, then it is just as before the sun rises, some rays come and dispel the darkness. So in the same way, only the rays of Nam Abbas 
dispel the darkness of Dehatma Buddhi, identification with the material body, remove all ignorance and drisham tatvandhanam apidishati bhakti pranayinim tatvandhanam means of those persons who are tattva under they are blind to the tattvas they don't know jiva tattva krishna tattva maya tattva nam tattva bhakti tattva leela tattva rasa tattva radha tattva krishna tattva Prem Vilas Vivarta Tattva. Hmm? All these tattvas they don't, they don't know. So they are Tattvandhanam. So for those person, then Drisham Tattvandhanam. This Namabhas, Drisham means Pragyam, Pragyam. Prakrista Rupain Gyan. Excellent knowledge. Nam Abbas will give Pragyam. Api Dishayati. Dishayati here means Arpayati. This Nam Abbas will offer Pragya, excellent knowledge of what? Bhakti Pranayinim. Him, Bhakti Pranayinim means Krishna Bhakti Vishayam. Of this subject, the, all the tattvas of Krishna Bhakti will be revealed by this. So, In the verse of Mahabhu, first verse, Chaito Dapana Majanam, this is the stage of Anatta Nivriti. Hmm? Sadhu Sangha and Anatta Nivriti. The Chitta becomes cleansed. Then, Bhava Mahadavakni Nirvapanam, material existence, that fire is extinguished. That is Nishta. Because when the Anattas are cleared and Nishta comes, now you have the Ekagrata Chitta, one pointed Chitta. Do you know what chitta is? Raise your hand if you know what chitta is. I have some. Yes, what is chitta? Mental phenomena. Okay. Anyone else? What do you say? Mental phenomena. Conscious. Huh? Is that what the mirror of the mind? Yes. The mirror of the mind. Anyone else? The mirror of the mind, I will It's where all the cells are. This is very, very important to understand. Very, very important. When the uni before the universe is created, then in Prakriti there's equilibrium. Three modes are in equilibrium. So nothing is manifest. So when, by the glance of the Supreme Lord, by His Kriya Shakti, the equilibrium of Prakriti is broken, then the first element that comes out is very bright, very light, very subtle. And it is uh, very sattvic, as sattvic as things can be in this world. And that element is called Mahatattva. Right? Mahatattva. Then Rajas appears more. And the Mahatattva, which is very light, and it's also Niskriya, it doesn't have any activities. It kind of condenses by the touch of Rajagun and now has Kriya movement. Just like the vapor can condense and become water and then flow. So that element is called Sutra Tattva. Sutra Tattva. Then this Sutra Tattva, it moves and it uh, takes on shapes, it solidifies. Just like vapor can become liquid and then the liquid can solidify in a shape. So then those uh, solidified shapes in the contaminant in the chitta, that's because of, they become solid, they become more gross because of tamagun now in the Mahatattva. So those solidified shapes are that is the element of ego, ahankar. So all the elements of the universe are present in us to a small degree. So in our subtle body, what is there? The ego has the portions, the, the slightly more sattvic portion of ego, which itself is a transformation of tamas, is called the mind. And the rajasi portion is called buddhi. And from the tamasic portion comes the shabda, and from shabda space and then all the gross elements. So our body is made, this is the gradual condensation or the gradual grossification of prakriti. Yeah? Understand? It's clear? 
So in your subtle body, all those elements are there. So the first element, the Mahatattva, that portion of the Mahatattva, which is very bright, which is very light, which is very shining, which is Niskriya, has no movement in it because it's not Rajasic. That portion of the Mahatattva in your subtle body is called Chitta. Mm. Okay. Now you know what Chitta is. And then when that condenses, and the, the, that Sutra Tattva, which is the Kriya Shakti of the Lord, move, movement in the universe, which is the organizational principle behind everything, yeah, that in your body is called Pran. That is Pran. It's the organizational principle. That's why you can't bring a dead body back to life. Because you can't get all the cells to be organized and work together as one unit. Because the Pran has gone. You mm -hmm. see? So when that Pran is moving in your Chitta, that is called Chitta Vritti. A thought. But because our senses are contacting Tamagun, and the, and the, the objects of the world are all tamasic, every gross object is the transformation of ego in Tamagun. So because the tamasic elements go into the mind, then they make impressions. So that solidification of the chitta due to tamagun is called samskars. Mm -hmm. And so those samskars, they're latent in your chitta, but what happens is, as you're moving around in your daily life, then the, a samskar from, your, from the ahankar will enter into the mind. And then you think, ah, oh, I want an ice cream, you see? Because there's a samskar of eating ice cream before. Or I want drugs, sex, there may be simple impressions, there may be pious impressions. I want to help poor people, I want to build a hospital, whatever. So all those samskars are there in the chitta, in the subconscious mind, and the, 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 the collection of samskars, the, when they're collected together in a dense mass, that is your ahankar. So the ego is a vasana mai ahankar. It is made of vasana. Uh, the impressions of very, that manifest in the form of many desires, unlimited desires. So it's very important to know anatomy. In our Chaitanya Academy, this is the first thing we teach everyone on the first day. You have to, the first thing you have to know is yourself. What am I doing here? What's going on? Understand the mechanics of what's going on and then what are we going to do about it? So when Mahapu said, Chaito Darpana Marjanam, he means this chitta, which is very bright and light and luminous, has become dirty by the movements of the pran, the rajasic movement of pran and the tamasic impressions of worldly life. So Nam Prabhu himself is aprakrita pran, supernatural pran. And he comes and becomes one with your pran. He takes, when you chant, he takes over your pran and starts moving around and, and eradicating all the samskars. Nam is, Hari Nam is Aprakrita Pran, supernatural Pran. So, but before the Shuddha Nam of, a super, of Aprakrita Pran appears, there's just the abbas of that supernatural Pran that begins to cleanse the mind. And then when the Chitta becomes <laughs> steady, very, very sattvic and niskriya, then it's not dark anymore and it has a, a, a potency to reflect. So you can see, perhaps you've read the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. In the third canto, Sula, uh, Sri Kapil Dev explains very, very precisely the definition of Prakriti, the definition of Mahatattva, Chitta, Sutra Tattva, which is the Mukhya Pran, the original Pran, and the Manas, Buddhi, everything. There's one or two verses on each and every level. So when he's describing the Chitta, he says, Swachatvam avikaritvam santatvam iti chetasa. This chitta has three characteristics. The first one is swachatva. Swachatva means purity, and uh, that swachatva, purity, in the commentaries of Sri Daswami and others, it's defined as Bhagavad Bimba Grahitva. Bimba means reflection, and Bhagavad means Supreme Lord, Bhagavan. And Grahitva means the power to catch. So when the chitta becomes nirvikar, it becomes steady then it has Bhagavad Bimba Grahitva, the power to catch the reflection of the form of Sri Krishna. So that is darshan. That is darshan. So actual uh, chanting without offense, real chanting and hearing, it is a darshan, it is seeing from the beginning. So a person who will chant Nam, Namabhas, gradually, gradually they will see the beautiful form of Sri Krishna reflected in their chitta. 
then his root, then Gum, Parika, his own Swarup, Seva, and Lila in a Kram. Tannama Rupa Charitari Sukirtananu Smachyo Kramena Rasanama Nasi Nyodja. And then, in this way, Chaito Darpanamajanam refers to the Anartanibriti. The Chitra is becoming free from the influence of these impressions and clear enough. And then Nishta Bhava Mahadavagni Nivarpanam. When the Chitra becomes steady, then you don't identify with the body anymore. No worldly desires anymore. You know that you are spiritual and you will never die. And you see the smiling face of Sri Krishna in your heart. This is why in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavat Seva Bhagavati Uttama Shlokei Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki When the person comes to Nishta, now he becomes situated in irrevocable bhakti. Because really he knows, he doesn't have a doubt anymore. It's Krishna God, Krishna God, maybe. Maybe all these sadhus are lying. They made it up. Very clever business model. Yeah. No, then he realized, ah, yes, Krishna is supreme truth. Krishna is my best friend. Krishna is in my heart. And everything else is only smoke and mirrors. So Bhakti Bhavati nice to keep. That is the Bhava Mahadavagni Navapanam. No struggle, no suffering anymore. Then, Shayakarya Chandra Kapitaranam. The, the lotus of uh, the night blooming lotus of good fortune opens. That is the stage of Ruchi. And then Bhityavadhu Jivanam. That is the stage of Asakti. It means that all transcendental knowledge is manifested now because you will realize you are a Vadu. <laughs> the gopis, Krishna's, the, you know, Vadu means newly married bride. So, Eta Param Tanubito Bhuvigopu Vadu. Go in the Eva Nikalatmani Roda Bhava. Uddhavji said, out of everyone in this world who has taken birth, no one is successful. Even Brahma is not successful. The only successful birth is the birth, not as a Brahmin, but in a Gopa caste. And not as a male, as a female. And also a female who is married to someone else. They are, that's the best birth that you can have to be Gopavadu, a newly married Gopi. Because only them, Govinda Eva Nikala Mani Ruda Bhava, they can attain the Ruda Bhav, Mahabhav. This is the Vanchanti Yad Bhava Biyomani O Vayamcha Kim Brahma Jamma Bhi Ananta Katar Sasya. This love is desired by Mumukshu, those who want liberation, and even those who are liberated, and Vayam, and even by us, Krishna's eternal associates. We want to have such a love, but we cannot, because we don't have that Gopi form. Hmm? So, Kim Brahma Janna Bi Ananta Katara Sasi, what's the use of taking birth as a Brahmin? What's the use of even taking birth as Lord Brahma? If you don't have taste in this Katara of Braja Gopis, because taste, Ruchi, taste in the Katara of Braja Gopis is like a seed that will one day grow and become Ruta Bhav, Mahabhav. Hmm? So, Vidyabhadhu Jivanam means that just as a chaste wife, only serves a husband and no one else. So in the same way, this divine knowledge never serves anyone except for Nam Prabhu. Nam is the life and soul of this knowledge. That's the general meaning. And the confidential meaning is that in the stage of Asakti, you become a Vadu. You get the knowledge that you are a Vadu. Brishabhanu Pure Janama Loibo Javate Biba Have. Srila Bhakti Nortakor said, when will I take birth in Brishabhanu Pur Varsana? And then when I have become of marriageable age, my hand will be given in marriage to a gop in Yavat. Then you have a vadu. So, these four, first four flames of the fire of Sankirtan described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this verse, these are all the effects of Nam Abbas. Then should the Nam appears. When should the Nam appears? Should the Sattva Vishesha Ma Prema Suryang Susamyabak? Then you enter into the stage of Bhav. So, this is what Rupa Goswami Pad is writing here. Yeah, Brahma Sakshat, no, sorry. Yada Vasu Kudam Kavalita Bhava Dhanta Vibhavo. That Nama Vas is not limited to destroying sins, but Nama Vas also gives the uh, reflection and insight into the spiritual world and services there. And gradually, as you become absorbed in that, Sambandha Gyan is, darsh is Darshan. Gurudev used to say, theoretical knowledge is no knowledge. So the first stage of bhakti is called Sambandha Gyan. 
It's not a theoretical Sambanda that we know all the tattvas, we can make a chart and put, fill in all the details. Sambanda Gyan is Darshan. Abhideya Tattva, the practice is Darshan and the goal is also Darshan. But that Darshan in the stage of Namabhas is a reflection in the heart. So the Jiva Goswami has given a very beautiful commentary on the verse spoken by Lord Shiva. Perhaps you know. Lord Shiva was at the Jagya of Daksha. Daksha arrived, everyone stood up to respect him, but Lord Shiva was in a trance, he didn't stand up. And then Daksha Maharaj became angry. Hey, you're my son-in-law, you, you should have respected me. And he cursed Lord Shiva. Afterwards, Lord Shiva explained, Satvam Vishuddham, Basu Deva Shabditam, Yadiyate Yatra Pumana Pavritaha. He said, the stage of Vishuddha Sattva is known as by the name Bosudev. Sattvam Vishuddham Bosudeva Shabditam. Yadiyate Tatra Pumana Pavrita. In that stage, Puman, the Parampurush, the Supreme Lord, is uh, uncovered. So Jiva Goswami raises this question. If Lord Shiva says, when Vishuddha Sattva appears, which is called Basudev, Sattvam Vishuddham Basudeva Shabditam, when this Vishuddha Sattva appears, then the Supreme Lord is experienced apavrita, uncovered. Then what does it, then does that mean you can experience him covered? Oh. Huh? If you if you say you experience it seems redundant. You experience the Supreme Lord covered. Sorry, uncovered. It seems redundant. He says, no, it's not redundant. Because prior to the, the appearance of Bhav, Shuddha Sattva Visheshatma, you also experience the, experience the Lord. But it is not a direct experience uncovered, it is a bas, a reflection of the Lord in your chitta. Mm -hmm. You see? So all these people are saying, yes, Raghuduga Bhakti, we have a chance. Step one, get your swarup, Ekadas bars from someone. Step two, learn the schedule of the Astakali Lila. Step three, project yourself mentally into the Lila. This is all bogus. Because in, in the stage of Ruchi, then you can realize the associates. And then when you realize they're reflected in your heart, then you can follow them. What is the question of Tishtan Brajeta Danuragi Jananugami following the associates if you can't see them? <laughs> eh? Okay, I'll put a blindfold on you and I'm going to go somewhere. Just follow me. <laughs> hmm? So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sutakura said, those persons for whom they have not realized the non-difference between Nam and Nami, who have not realized that Shravan is Darshan, Kirtan is Darshan, Sparan is Darshan. They're not doing bhajan at all. They're like a hunter who goes into the forest at night, shooting arrows <coughs> here and there, hoping that he'll hit something. That's their bhajan. So, the Shastras describe what we can realize in each stage. So from this we can understand what stage we're in and what our practice, uh, our practice should be. What to do, the next level, the next level, the next level. Yeah. And if a person is completely crooked and dishonest and pretending, hmm, they, they, they don't admit, actually I don't have any realization. Hmm. Okay, I'm not realizing anything because I chant Nama Parat, but I'm also doing Raganuga Bhakti. Hmm. Is there such a thing? How to do Raganuga Bhakti while chanting Nama Parat? Hmm. And if you're not chanting Nama Parat, then Nira Parad Nam Lale Prema Upajay. The realization of love starts to rise up in the heart. The, the, the darshan comes. Bhakti Parasheno Bhavo Virakti. Just as you're eating a meal with each bite, you experience some pleasure, satisfaction, and detachment from hunger. So bhakti is an experience. And if the experience is not coming, it's due to Nama Parad. There's, and there's no such thing as bhajan or raganuga bhakti. There's no real experience of Vaidhi bhakti while the aparads are there. So now Rupa Goswami Pad is saying in the next verse, very beautiful. Yad Brahma Sakshat Kutiniste Api Binashama Eti Banana Bogai, Upeti Nama, Spurani Tate Prada the Karma Eti Biro Tibeda. Does a person who is chanting the holy name have to hmm, experience his uh, karma, parabdha karma? And Rupa Goswami is saying, Viroti Veda, the Vedas are roaring. Viroti means roaring. Loudly the Vedas proclaim that Yad Brahma Sakshat. Here, 
All different devotion says the word Brahma he means Paramatma. Because Brahma, Atata, Brahma Jigyasa, Brahma can mean the supreme truth. And here he, he says specifically the word Brahma means Paramatma and Sakshat means direct darshan. So let's say there's a yogi, he did his pranayama, he stopped his breathing and everything and he went into uh, uh, Dharan, Dhyan and Samadhi. And in his Samadhi he's seeing four-arm form of Paramatma in his heart. That's called Brahma Sakshat. Yet Brahma Sakshat Kritinistaya Api. And he has nista in his vision of Paramatma in the heart. Binashamayeti binana bogai. But still, though he is aprarabdha karma, that's all the karmas from the next life, they're gone. He's burnt them. Mm -hmm. And even he is the Kutan beach. He is a karma in the form of desires in the heart, which haven't manifested, they're also gone. But his parabdha karma, that means, arabdha means begun. The word arabdha means begun. So prarabdha is that karma which is already rolling. So basically prarabdha karma means that karma that we're experiencing now from the time we're born to the time we die in this life. That's prarabdha karma. So binashamit binana bogai means even for that yogi who's having direct darshan of paramatma in his heart, though he got free from all other karma, he cannot, his prarabdha karma will not be destroyed without tasting it. His Parabdha Karma will not be destroyed without tasting. So then the yogis, they have all kinds of tricks to burn off their karma. They have this thing called Nirman Chitta. Where parts of their Chitta go and enter into uh, the wombs of various women around the world. And then they are born. And so in many bodies, they burn off their karma quickly. So some persons who are born, there's no soul there. It's just one yogi sent a piece of his chitta and he's controlling that body in his meditation and just trying to burn off the karma by having many lives all at the same time. Are they mostly Eugene? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think so when they start the kirtan and they all run to hide by the door. Yeah. <laughs> Mahaprabhu said in, 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 in Srimad Bhagavatam, it said, Vilajja Asangaha. That when you do kirtan, you should be vilajya, shameless. Just jump in the middle of the kirtan like a madman and dance and sing at the top of your voice. That's how to do kirtan. If you don't feel like doing this, what is this? Because some, some nama parad is holding you back. It's the ego. Absorbed in, I'm absorbed in myself, what will everyone think? So vilajya, gayan vilajya, vicharen asangaha. Forgetting being detached from everything and without any shame or shyness, jump in the middle of the kirtan and sing loudly and dance like a madman. This is the sign that this person is not. Mm, this is one of the symptoms of a person who does not have nama parat. Of course, sometimes nama paratis who are extroverts, they they can <laughs> pretend. But so this is not good. But person really wants to serve nam, they should not have any shame or shyness during kirtan. How Gurudev used to make us do kirtan. He used to get, if the kirtan is going on and someone's standing, he would grab them and throw them in the middle of the kirtan. And then he would push them and make them run up and down. You know, in Navadi, in the temple room, and he would make everyone run up and down in the temple room from side to side with big jumpers. I remember once I came to uh, Brinda Devi's temple in Kamyavan, and we all got off the bus and, and the kirtan started. But when I was on the bus, I was like halfway through a round. So I got off and I thought, I'll just finish this round, then I'll go in the kirtan. And then I felt someone behind me punch me in the back. Oh, who was that? So I, I, I turned around to reciprocate, and, and it was Gurudev. <laughs> oh. And then he, he grabbed my Japa Mala and then he pushed me with his other hand into the kirtan, like that. And so since that time, I've just been in kirtan all the time. I can always feel that push of Gurudev's hand behind me, pushing me into the kirtan. Huh? They, you see, that's what Guru David, that was his policy. He told me to stay with the kirtan devotees up front, Krishna Das and all them. Yes. And they were going so fast, after a while, like, Brad, if you start going backwards, still chanting and everything, yeah. all of a sudden I see all the whole, all the devotees part. Mm. And one figure comes walking. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> and he just pulls me all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> see? So it's a special mercy. You can see how Pushpadam was dancing like a madman in the kirtan last night. Why? Because this is Kripa. 
Vaishnav Kripa, when Vaishnav gives you that push, then you cannot stop. So here, yeah, Brahma Shaksat Kriti Nistaya Pi Binashnait Binana Boga Yapeti Namas Pranita Te Pravda Karmati Biroti Beda. Even that yogi, that person who is in a trance and directly seeing Paramatma, he, he's free from all karma, but his Parabda karma, he, it will not be destroyed without tasting it. But, Peti Namas Pranenita Te Parabda Karmati Viroti Beda. As soon as Shuddha Nam appears on the tongue, all Parabda karma finished. No Parabda karma at all. This is why Srimad Bhagavatam says, Oho Pataswat Pachato Gariyan Yats Jivate Vartate Namatu Biyamte Pustapaste Johusu Shasra Arya Brahmana Chonama Grinanti Yete. If a dog eater, a Chandala, the holy name will appear on the tip of his tongue. That means not even the whole name, just on the tip of your tongue. You know when you say, Krik, Krik, after the tip of the tongue goes like, Krik. So as soon as the holy name appears on the tip of the tongue, Krik, then that dog eater. He becomes, he becomes qualified to perform jagyas. He's, he, has, he has completed his study of the Vedas. He has done all austerities. He has been to all holy places. And he has all 12 Brahminical qualifications. So it doesn't mean that he actually performs jagyas. But what it means is, why is a Brahmin a Brahmin? Because by his Parabdha Karma, he has a Brahmin body. Right? In his last life, he did whatever. And by this now he's born in a Brahmin family, has a Brahmin body. Still he has to become qualified, uh, educated in that life to be a, a real Brahmin. Uh, but the, the Dohita, he cannot, he is not qualified to do sacrifices. So the verse is not telling us that that Sudra, when he chants, he will do the sacrifices. But what it means is that his, his uh, Chandala, his low class body of a Dohita, was destroyed the, the second the holy name came on the tip of his tongue. Shastra is like this. It doesn't explain things directly. It does through dwani, through the power of suggestion. So this is the meaning. So Prabhupada Karmeti Viroti Veda, all the Vedas loudly roar that even Prabhupada Karma is finished with the first appearance of pure Nam. So then Rupa Goswami parts praying. Agadamana Yashodananda no Nanda Suno Kamalanayana go Pichanda Brindava Nindra Pranata Karun Krishna Vitaneka Surupe Toi Mamarati Varta Tam Namadeya O Nam Prabhu May my Rati My love for you Increase every day hmm? We should watch for this Is our love for Nam increasing every day or not? Because it's the nature of Nam. That just one chance, then love comes. And then more love, and then more love. So Rupa Goswami is praying, Oh, may this always happen that my love for you is growing and growing and growing day by day. In your many forms, such as what? Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written a commentary on this verse. Hari Namatua Anika Swarupa that song is Srila Bhakti Nautaku's explanation of this first, first verse. So Rupa Goswami Pahati said, You folks, Agadamana, Yashoda Nanda no, Nanda Su no, Kamala Nayana Gopi Chandra Brindava Nindra. You have so many forms, like Agadaman. You chastised Agasur. All the coward boys, they went inside the mouth of Agasur. And from the poisonous fumes, toxic fumes, they fainted. And they were as if dead. But see, Krishna came there. All the boys were running. And Krishna knew, oh, this is a demon. The boys thought, oh, what is that? It looks like a big cave. Let's go and play in the cave. Woo! And they all went running. Let's play. And then another boy said, look, these are spiked, these mountains. They look like the teeth of a huge snake. And that cave looks like his gaping mouth. And that fishy smell in the wind is his undigested breakfast. Hmm? His tongue is like a freeway. Then we shouldn't go. It's a, it could be a demon. Another boy said, oh, what if it's a demon? Krishna always saves it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> huh? And they're all running. And, and, and Krishna is just like a little boy. He doesn't know that he's God. He doesn't think he has. He doesn't have faith that he can fight. So Krishna is spreading his arms and trying to stop his friends. But one's going this way, one's going that way, one's going through his next. Right? 
And they all go and, and when they go into the mouth of Agassu, Krishna's looking and he has tears in his eyes because he feels I'm going to lose all my friends. So then Jogamaya uncovers his, uncovers him. Ah, you are Bhagavan. You can save them. Really? <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And then Krishna, he sets off and climbs over the teeth of Agasura and <laughs> runs along his tongue. And he goes inside the mouth of Agasur, and there he sees all of his friends are unconscious as if dead. <gasps> then, see Krishna, he began to expand himself in the throat of Agasur and choked him. And Agasur, his eyes popped out like Rasagulas, and his soul left. And he was liberated. Why? Because he was the brother of Putana. Mm. This is why. Because Put Putana dressed up like, like a mother of Braj. It reminded Krishna of Madhya Shoda, so he's just full of love and he sent her to Golok. And he decided, oh, not only you, but all your family members will be liberated. So, for this reason, Agasura was also liberated, got Swarupya Mukti. So then, now, one thing is there, that when Sri Krishna killed Putana, he didn't expand himself, he didn't do anything supernatural, he just sucked the breast like an ordinary baby. When Krishna killed Trinavarta, he didn't do anything special, he just held on to his neck. If you pick up a baby, they go like this onto your neck. He just did this. When he killed Shakatasura, he was just lying on his back, eating his toes. So he didn't do anything supernatural. So why, when Krishna killed Agasur, did he do this supernatural feat of expanding himself? Because when Putana took him, his mother was watching. His friends were watching when he was kicking his legs and so on. During these pastimes, bridge baskets were there and they were watching. So he was ashamed to do anything supernatural in front of them. But when he was inside Agasur and all his friends were unconscious, he thought, okay, my mother's not here, no one will see. <laughs> so he wasn't embarrassed to, to do something Bhagavan-like. <laughs> He's ashamed of being Bhagavan in Vrindavan. He hides it. After he lifted Govardhan Hill, he came to the Govardhan and all the devatas were worshipping him and massaging him with oil. And they did puja to him. And when the demigods went, then his friends were looking for him. Every, oh, there he is. <coughs> And they ran up to him. <laughs> Krishna, what are you wearing? <laughs> yeah? They could smell the perfume from the devil. Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. And he was denying it. He didn't want his friends uh, to know that he's Bhagavan. Because there's no fun in this. Because he's Yashodananda. Agadamana Yashodananda. No? He's just the son of uh, Yashoda. Lord Narayan can be God. Let everyone worship Narayan. And just the son of Yashoda. So Agadaman. Then, after Agasur was had uh, expired and was liberated, then Krishna he looked at his friends, and by the nectar of his glance, they were revived, and they came back to sense. Ah, wonderful. What Gagacharya said is true. Anena sarva durgani yuyam anjasturisita. That. Oh, Pritim Kauravanti Manava. Anyone who has love for Krishna, they cannot be killed. They will cross over all obstacles by his kindness. So Agadamana. Gopis call Krishna Agadamana. Why? Because we have been swallowed by the snake of separation. And we can only be saved by your Kamalanayan. Merciful glance. Only that your merciful glance can bring us back to life. So Agadamana Yashoda Nandano. Nanda Suno, oh, you are the son of Nanda Maharaj. That means you are a prince. So a prince is a Swachanda. He's free to do what he likes, to go anywhere and do anything. Krishna doesn't have to herd cows. Nanda Maharaj has so many servants who can herd the cows. He only does it, he uses the cows. That's a pretext to go out into the forest so he can meet with the gopis. And that's why Krishna does puja, he worships the cows. Oh, thank you so much. You're my ticket. <laughs> My excuse to go to the forest and meet with Radhika. So, Krishna is Nanda Suno. He's the son of Nanda Maharaj. So, because he's a prince, he has no pressure on him. He has no duties on him. He does what he wants. So, he's Nischintya. He has no anxiety. Radharani said, Oh, 
Oh, Krishna is the true object of love. Why? Because he has no anxiety. A person who has anxiety cannot truly love. Because to truly love, you have to be absorbed in that love. And if you've got something nagging, some duties in the back of your mind, like yada yada idamasya glani bhavati bharata bhutana madamasya tadatmanam sajamiham, whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious principles and a rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself to establish dharma. <laughs> so if you have duties like this, hmm, all these duties are not done by Krishna, they're done by Vishnu inside. <laughs> So Krishna is Nanda Suno, he's a prince, he has no responsibility, he has no worries, he's nischintya, so he can really love in a way that no other, even Krishna's own expansions, even his Vasudev form or any expansion of Krishna, they cannot truly love and be avesh, absorbed in that love like Krishna. So he's Nanda Suno. Kamalala Nayana, his eyes are very beautiful like a lotus, Kamala is lotus. And it's uh, somewhat reddish. So Sri Krishna's eyes become reddish when he's been awake all night and when he's intoxicated from relishing the madhu, the honey of Radhika's brain. Then he's Kamalanayan, the Gopi Chandra. He's like the moon for the gopis. Just as all rasa, all flavor comes from the moon. So he is the one who makes all gopis taste prema rasa. Brindavanindra. He is the, the Indra of the forest of Vrindavan. Pranata Karun. He is very, very kind and compassionate to those who bow down to him. And lastly, Krishna. Here Krishna means Krishna. Krishna, this is the best. Of all the names of Krishna, the name of Krishna is the best name. So may my love for these names increase every day. Then, oh, we discussed this previously. There's something peculiar about this verse. It says, it does not say, Krishna, you have two forms. Your own Swarup and the Holy Name. It says, oh Harinam, you have two forms. Vacha and Vacha so it's very, what kind of glorification is this? It's, you will say, oh, Krishna, your name is great. You say, no, Nam, Nam, your Krishna form is great. <laughs> you understand the skill of Rupa Goswami? It's astonishing. So he's saying, Nama Swarupa Dvayam. The name has two Swarups. Vacham and Vachkam. Vacha means uh, that which is uh, expressed. And Vachaka means the expression. So that the expression is the syllables, Krishna. And that which is expressed by the syllables, Vacha, is the Swarupa of Krishna. So, though these two are two Swarups mm, of Nam Prabhu, but Purvasmat Pramayiva Antakarnam, I think the previous one, uh, the, the later one, is superior to the previous one. So, that means Nam is more merciful than Krishna's direct Swarup. Why? Because if someone commits offense to Krishna's Swarup, by chanting Harinam, all those offenses go away. And then the name hmm, immerses you, <coughs> plunges you into the ocean of Seva Amrita. Now someone may say, the question may arise, that okay, if someone makes offense to Krishna's Swarup, the name will forgive him. But what if someone has committed offenses to the name? Then what will he do? Ten offenses beginning with Satam Ninda, Namna Parama, Harparadam, Vitanate, Itakya Timiyatam, Katamu Satayit Advigaram. Beginning with criticizing Vaishnavas. Considering the demigods like Lord Shiva to be equal to Krishna. Or seeing a difference between Krishna's name, form, qualities, and pastimes. Neglecting Guru, disrespecting Sri Guru. That means, disrespecting Sri Guru is thinking that the body of Guru is made of five mature elements like mine. Hmm? That's Nama Parad. Why? Because the Nam, should the Nam destroy his Parabdha Karma. So then the body of the person who is chanted Shuddha Nam, he has no material body. 
And so that person gives pure now. So if you think you, the Guru has a mature body like yours, then that means he didn't chant pure now, he didn't give the pure name to you. Then how you will chant? So this is Guru Avagya. Guru Avagya, Suchi Shastra Nindanam, to criticize the Vedic scriptures, to think that the glories in the scriptures, like Varoti Veda, the Vedas have loudly said that even your Prabhupada is finished with the first syllable of the name, pure name. Whereas the yogis who are having darshan of Paramatma, their Prabhupada Karma is not, not even not even one leaf on the tamarind tree which has millions and millions of leaves. Not one leaf of their Prabhupada Karma is removed by their deep and constant continuous meditation on Paramatma. Hmm? So you, hear, you think, oh, how can that be true? Hmm. Oh, you hear from the Rig Veda, Om Asya Jananto Nama Chit Vivaktan Mahaste Vishnu Sumatim Bajamahe Om Tat Sat Oh my Lord, we don't know you. But how wonderful it is that simply by Aksha Abhyas, the repetition of syllables, you reveal yourself and we will have very beautiful realization of you because Om Tat Sat, the holy name is self-manifesting. Swata Siddha, self-existent, Swayam Prakash, hmm? self-disclosing, illuminating. Hmm? Someone said, oh no, it can't, be that. it can't be that simple, just repeating the syllables. Then, Shuti Shasta Nindanam, criticizing Shasta and Tadata Vado Hari Namni Kalpanam. It means to think that the glories of the Holy Name are an exaggeration. So just having a, whispering a doubt in your heart about these glories and powers of the Holy Name, combined together, be, they become so many. It becomes offense to Guru because Guru Dev told you this, but you don't believe it. And the Shastra is saying it. And then you're thinking the Shastra is exaggerating. So then you imagine different glories. So that's, that's just having a doubt in that mantra of the Rig Veda is already four na types of Nama Parat. So, the question comes, if by chanting the name you become free from offenses to Krishna's root, but what if you made offense to Nam? Then what happens? So Rupa Goswami is answering that in the next verse. Sudita Srita Janati Rasaye Ramyachi Ganaskas Rupine Nama Gokala Pahotsubayate Krishna Purana Vapase Namo Namaha Janati Rasaye That means Persons who have great, great misery, great suffering, and that greatest suffering which will not be removed uh, without suffering it. Prabhupada Karma even can be removed, but Nama Parad cannot be removed without suffering it. Nama Bas will remove all pap, so you don't have to taste it. But if you make Nama Parad, you have to suffer it. So that's the greatest suffering. But Sudita Sweet Janati Rashe Radhachit Ganasuka Sarupine O Nam Prabhu, you are the condensed embodiment of conscious transcendental bliss. No Nam Gokula Mahutsava. You are a great festival of joy for all the residents of Nandagaon, Varsana, all of Gokul. Krishna Puna Vapase Namona Maha. You are the direct and complete body of Krishna himself, I bow down to you again and again because Sudita Sita Janati Rashe, because you destroy the worst of all suffering, the reactions of Namapur. So here Rupa Goswami is saying that not only does the holy name take remove offenses made to the deity, but if one does Avishranti, continuous service to the name, Avishranti without any rest, not resting your whole life serving Nam, chanting, chanting, chanting and serving Nam. Mm? Then Nam Prabhu will also take away all offenses as well to himself. Mm? So it is said, Nama Parada Yukta Nam, Nama Neva Harantigam. For those who chant continuously, then Nam Prabhu also takes away the reactions to himself. So then in the final verse, Sila Rupa Goswami Pada said, Narad Vinod's Jeevana Sudhomi Nira Ashta Maduri Pura Tonkista Nama Kamas Parame Rasane Rasena Sada O you who Narad Vinod's Jeevana Here Narad Vina means Narad Asya Vina the Vina of Narad Uds Jeevana means Chaitayati makes his vena come alive. 
the veena, when Narad Muni chants the holy name, his veena becomes alive and begins to play by itself. So, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written a commentary on this verse also. Narad Muni Bhajai Bhinao Radhikuraman Name Namayamani Yudita Hoi Bhagata Gita Sane Amiya Dara Bodhisikana Shavana Juka Lehikiya Bhagata Gana Sagane Nache Bodhiya Apana Hiya Naharat Muni Bhajai Bina Radhikaram when the devotee chants purely, then he can hear the, the strings of the Veena of Narad. And Nam Prabhu appears in the form of Radharaman. Amiyadara and Varishigana. And then it's like Amrita nectar is raining down from the sky. It's like a torrential rain of nectar. Pura and everywhere becomes flooded. And it enters into the ear and overfills the heart and all the devotees become dancing. Dancing, wildly dancing. So Narad Vinod's Jivana Sudurmi Niryasa Maduri Pura. Maduri Pura means, Pura means a flood. The holy name makes a flood of sweetness, Maduri Pura. And that sweetness is the Sudha Urmi Niryas, the essence, Niryas, the essence of the Sudha Urmi. Sudha means Amrita, nectar, and Urmi means waves. So this is like a flood of sweetness, which is like an ocean of nectar, and it's not still, it's always moving. Always moving. That means in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, there are Sanchi baths, many waves rising and falling and crashing into each other and mixing together. So, Krishna Nama Karna Kamams Purame, O Krishna Nam, please fulfill my desire, manifest in my heart and Rasane and on my tongue, Rasaina, along with Rasa, Prema Rasa. When? Sada, forever. So, in this way. <laughs> Rupa Goswami completes his wonderful, wonderful prayer to Nam Prabhu. So, I say this prayer every day. Before, after doing Gayatri, pick up my mala, and then to Nikola Suti Mole Bhakti Mala Duti Niradita To take shelter of Harinam, following the moods of Srila Rupa Goswami Pad. So, one thing, this is the last uh, class of this Nam Tattva festival. And we've spoken so many things about Nam Tattva, but still something is missing. What is that? Sri Jagannanda Pandit said, Asadu Sangha Bhai Krishna Nam Nai Hai Namakshara Bahirai Vatu Namakabu Nai. That if one associates with the Asadu, non devotees, then the name will not come to him. And he'll be speaking. But Namakshara Bahirai, the external syllables of the name are not actually the name. The name is syllables, but not those syllables. Sometimes people think, no, the external syllables are not the name, so they think the name isn't the syllables. No, the name is syllables. It's just not those syllables. <clears throat> those syllables which are coming from your Prakrita Pran, material Pran, which are manifested as a gun, a quality of Akash. You know, sound is everywhere. Sound is the quality of Akash. So space... Akash is everywhere, and in that space there's sound. So when Pran from your Mul Adha Chakra rises up and gathers some power, you know when you sing, you sing from down here, not from here. First it's a movement of Pran, and then it moves, in, and then as the Pran comes to the throat chakra, it becomes obstructed by the throat and the tongues and the teeth. And then, and then that obstruction releases from the Akash, which is everywhere, the quality of sound which is in the Akash. Just like if you have a stone, so that's earth. So fire is present in earth. So it's fire in a stone. Right? Don't believe me? Just get two stones and strike them together, flames will jump out. Right? Sparks will jump out. So 
The fire is there. So just as the fire is present in stone, so similarly sound is in Akash everywhere. And is the disturbance caused in the ether by the movement of pran, which causes the release of sound. So that material sound which is released from the material Akash, that is called Jadakash, that is not the holy name. So see, Jagannath and Bani saying Namakshara Bahirai, Bhakti Namakabana, external syllables are not the name. But that person who has received mercy of Guru and Vaishnavas, when the Aprakrita Pran appears in the Muladha Chakra and rises up and becomes Para, Pasanti, Madhima, and then Vaikari, then this sound is not coming from Jadakash, from the material space, it is coming from Chidakash, from spiritual space. And that is Nam Prabhu. Nam Prabhu is the vibration coming from spiritual space, Chidakash. So that manifestation of the Aprakita supernatural name from the Chidakash, spiritual space, it will not happen if we associate with non-devotees. So Asadu Sangha Bhai Krishna Nam Nai Hai Namakshara Bahirai Bhati Nam Kabul Nai Kabul Nam Abbas Sada Nam Aparad Generally, if we associate with non-devotees, then there will be occasionally Kabul Nam Abbas, some Nam Abbas sometimes, but mainly Sada Nam Aparad, mainly all offenses. So Yadi Krishna Nam Kari Bhai Sadhu Sangha Karo. If one wants to chant the pure name, you must do Sadhu Sangha. Jadi Krishna Nam Koribe Sadhu Sangha Karo. So this is very important. Now, there is the, the, the pure name which will take one to Vaikuntha or even to Golok. That is the name on the path of Vaidhi Bhakti. If someone serves Radha and Krishna through Vaidhi Bhakti, then they can attain Golok. But that Golok is not the aim and object of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It's Swakiya, right? There is Aishwarya Gyan and Swakiya Mood, yes. The Krishna Loka planet has four dharms in it. The outer effulgence, Vaibhav of that dharm is called Golok. And Krishna is there and the Vedas personified are praying to him. And there's Aishwarya Gyan and there is, some, there is a Swakiya, like as if Radha Krishna married there. Uh, they have a pastime of being married and they're married there. So, but higher than that is, inside that is Dwarka Dham, where there's a, some sweetness on the basis of Aishwarya. And higher than that, inside that is Mathura, where sweetness is the basis, but mixed with Aishwarya. So there's Aishwarya and then Madhurya Mishrit, Aishwarya, then Aishwarya Mishrit, Madhurya, and then in the center of, the, of the, the center of that planet, that is called Braja, or Brindavan, or Golok Brindavan, or Gokul. So that place is Kevala Madhurya, extremely pure sweetness only, without any mood of opulence, is there of course, but it's hidden by so much sweetness, and everyone has a natural Madhurya mood there. So there there's no idea that Krishna is God, even Krishna himself doesn't know that he's God. And there is the Parakya mood. So Jaya Jaya Ujwala Rasa, Sava Rasa Sa, Parakya Bhave Johe, Brajate Pracha. This Parakya mood is only in Braja. So if you worship Radha and Krishna, but in Vaidhi Bhakti, you can go to Golok, the outer, the Vaibhav of, of, of Braja. But to enter into Braja, then, Sakali Jagati Mori Kori Vidhi Bhakti, Vidhi Bhakti Braja Bhav Paiti Nahi Shakti. Krishna said, so many people in the world, in the universe, they worship me on the path of Vaidhi Bhakti. But this Vaidhi Bhakti does not have the power to awaken the moods of Braja. So th that is only possible by Raganuga Bhakti. So not only is Sadhu Sangha necessary, but one must associate with Braj Rasik Vaishnava. A Vaishnava who is relishing Braja Rasa. Otherwise, only hearing the Gatar of Vaikuntha or the Gatar of Krishna's opulence, then <coughs> the samskaras will not come by which one can enter into Raganuga Bhakti. You see, our desires are based on our samskaras, right? Our desires are based on our samskaras. So, Harinam, Nama Chintamani Krishnas. Harinam is Chintamani, fulfills all desires. 
So whatever samskaras you have, when you chant Hari Nam, according to that desire, Nam will reciprocate with that. But when we associate with Braj Rasik Vaishnavas, their katar is so sweet and so powerful, it gives the samskaras of Braj Bhav. Mm -hmm. And then when we chant, then we desire that. To be related to Krishna with no knowledge at all that he is God. How he is very sweet and beautiful, son of Nanda and Yashoda, his Gopinas and his Radhakanta Radharaman. Madhishanata Tve Brajavipina and he's the beloved of my Swamini. So by hearing Qatar, associating with pure Brajrasik Vaishnavas, that sanskar will come and then when you chant this Harinam Chintamani, this wish fulfilling desire will fulfill all of those wishes. But without that type of high level Sadhu Sangha, you, even the wishes will not come. We don't know what to wish for, actually. And uh, this is why, actually there's a very nice pastime. Once there was a pandit, Brahmin pandit, very learned, and he was studying for many years in Kashi, Varnasi. Varnasi. He knew all the Upanishads and Vedas, but by good fortune, one day he came to Vrindavan. And there in Vrindavan, he met some Vaishnavas. And by their association, he became very fortunate and decided, oh, impersonalism is quite wrong. Krishna is the supreme personality of God, and he became a devotee. So, because he was very learned, after some time, he was in Vrindavan now, and he was giving a class. And he was saying that Sri Krishna is the Advaya Gyan Paratattva. He is the supreme, non-dual, absolute truth. And Sri Krishna, he cannot be realized unless the heart is completely purified of all Rajas and all Tamas. Because he's pure, how can you realize the pure person in, if there is Rajas and Tamas in the heart? So, unless and until your heart is free from all Rajas and Tamas, then you will not realize him. So then, one Rasik Vaishnava was there in the audience. And he heard this. And uh, here is the, some fault in what he said. Some avyapti dosh, the defect of not covering the circumstance proper, fully. Uh, avyapti dosh. So, what he said is partly true. It's true. You cannot enter into the pastimes of Sri Krishna, realize them, unless one is free from Rajas and Tamas. It's true. Tadara, Jastamo, Bhavas, Kamala, Bhadi, Asti, Cheta, Eta, Anavidam, Stitam, Satpe, Prasidati, Evam, Prasanamana, So, Bhagavad, Bhakti, Yogata, Bhagatat, Vigyanam. So, Srimad Bhagavatam explains the mode of passion and ignorance goes away and then realization comes. So, that part was true. But the thing is this. Even if passionate ignorance go away and you become completely pure, still can't realize Krishna in Vrindavan. That was the fault. So what he said, it was true, but it wasn't enough. So one Rasik Vaishnava in the audience, he raised his hand and said, well, I say a comment. And because Rasik Vaishnavas, they're very poetic. So they speak in a very uh, suggestive way, very alankaric way. Oh, their words are all decorated with beautiful ornaments. So then that Vaishnava ever said, Harim Madhishate Rajobara Purata Sangayat Yamuntama Brajabhadrisham Naparati Mpakatam Sav Drishasutherapi. He said in poetry, this is a poem of Rupa Goswami actually. The evening time has come. And the sky has become filled with the dust raised by the hooves of the cows. And the sun is setting, so the sky is becoming dark. And Braja Gopis now, they are very excited. Why? In the daytime, they felt so much separation from Krishna. But now, when they see the dust rising in the forest, it means Krishna is coming back to the village. The sun is going down. That means very soon we will meet with Krishna. So they become very eager. So here Rupa Goswami is saying, Brajabhama Disham Na Parati Pakatasava Disha Suterapi. Persons who know all the Vedas, then they don't know the nature of the love of gopis and they cannot understand the loving pastimes between Krishna and the gopis. Because these pastimes are covered by Raja, the rising of the dust, and Tama, 
the setting of the sun. Huh? So here he's saying two things, Raja and Tama. Even if you're free from the material Raja and Tama, then you will not, even those who know all the Vedas, they cannot realize the confidential pastimes of Radha Krishna. They're very secret. Even in the spiritual world, they're a secret. There. And those pastimes are covered by a special darkness. The darkness of night and the darkness of the dust raised by the hooves of the cows. Mm -hmm. So that in this way, he corrected that person. And basically he was saying that only having a pure heart will not mean you can enter into Raghunuga Bhakti. Because anaradya radha padam boja renum anasitya brindarvi tatpatam kam asambhasita bhava gambira chitan kuta shama sindura sasyava gaha. Srila Raghunath Taska Swami Pad said, Where is the ocean of rasa? No one can find it. In which way to go to find the ocean of shama rasa, madhu rasa? Gopis love. They cannot find it unless and until they fulfill three conditions. Anuradha Radha Padamboja Renum. First of all, if you try to have a loving relationship with Krishna directly, you will fail. Like Mirabai. Hmm? She tried to have direct relation to Krishna, and because of this, she ended up becoming a maidservant of the queens in Dwarka. So, first thing, Anuradha Radha Padamboja Renum. You have to worship the dust of the lotus feet of Radhika. And by her mercy only one can attain Krishna's seva. Without Radhika's mercy, it's impossible. Then, Anasritya Brindavati Tarpadankam. One must take shelter of Brindavan, which is decorated with her footprints. And third condition, Asambhasitar Bhava Gabbira Chitan. One should have the Sambhad conversation with those Braj Rasik Rupanuga Vaishnavas whose hearts are deeply immersed in Radhika Seva. And if these three conditions are met, then the samskaras, the impressions will come and then chanting Harinam without offense will fulfill those desires which have been appeared in the heart by the blessings of pure Vaishnavas. Mm -hmm. Understand? Because, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one Brahmin wanted to read some poetry to him, but he did not have association of Rasik Vaishnavas. And he, so he'd written a poem that all the Siddhanta was wrong. So then, Sora Tamadaga Swami heard his poetry and he, he thought, oh, he was disgusted. This, <laughs> no. Rasa Basa Jadi Hoi Siddhanta Virod, Sahiti Na Pari Prabhu Mani Hai Krod. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is more humble than a bl blade of grass, Trinada Pisuni Chena. But two things make him become angry that he cannot tolerate. Rasa Basa Jadi Hoi Siddhanta Virod. If there's Rasa Basa or Apa Siddhanta, Mahaprabhu cannot tolerate. So Swarup Damada would screen everyone first to make sure that they would not disturb the heart of Mahaprabhu. So Swarup Damada Goswami said to that, that Brahmin, Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnava Stani, Ekantara Swaikoro Chaitanya Trani. Go and sit at the feet of a Vaishnava. Go, dear Vaishnava. Be in the shelter of Mahaprabhu. Sit at the feet of a Vaishnava and here and study Bhagavatam under his guidance. Chaitanya Bhakta Gana Nitya Karo Sangha Tabito Janibai Siddhanta Samudra Taranga. If daily you associate with the, the dear devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after that you will be able to enter into the waves in the ocean of Siddhanta. We might think that Siddhanta is like this fixed thing. But actually, everything moves depending on your adhikar. As the adhikar goes higher and higher, the way everything looks changes. So it's said that there are waves in the ocean of Siddhanta. Only when the chitter is not clean, then the mind has a, is jarred. It has a, we have mental inertia and there's a stiffness in our thinking. So that mental inertia and the stiffness of thinking that makes it impossible to accommodate the actual nature of Siddhanta. So, he said, hear Bhagavatam from a Vaishnava. Why? Because Bhagavatam is full of Bhakti Rasa. There are so many beautiful moods there. But if we'll read it, but the mood will not come. Hmm? Example is given. That if you read, you cold. You're sitting in the house. I was freezing today. It was very cold in my room. And then Prabhu bought me a heater, so then it was okay. So let's say you sit, you're in a cold room and you're very cold. Hmm? So then you read a book about a fire. Will you be warm? cannot feel the heat from reading. 
So in the same way, the Srimad Bhagavatam is actually describing the blazing fire, the heat of separation of Braja Gopis. But by reading it, we will not feel that heat. But when we hear Srimad Bhagavatam from a few Vaishnava who is feeling the heat of separation, then we can feel the heat of that And then reading Bhagavatam, we can realize something. So it's means first hear it and then Tatsrinvan Supatan and then repeat what you have heard Vicharna and then do deep deliberation on it Prabhaktya and then all the subjects of Srimad Bhagavatam the pastimes of Krishna awaken in the heart just like oh, it's getting late should I stop or should I tell a little bit more it's up to you you're the ones who have to drive home very far it's the last night you can uh, okay, some. just one or two drops. So when we're when we're in uh, Alachua, we're discussing Panchagit, five gits of the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. But uh, we ran out of time because we became lost in discussing Venu Git, Prana Git, we got to Gopi Git. We didn't come to y Yugal Git. So I'll say a few words about Yugal Git. In Yugal Git, it's called Yugal Git because the verses are in pairs. Usually, if there's a verse, the meaning is completed in one verse. But these verses are in pairs, such that if you read the first verse, actually, the, it's not a finished sentence. The meaning will be completed after two verses, so it's called Yuga Git. In this Yuga Git, gopis are in their homes, and Krishna is out in the forest, taking the cows to grace. They can hear him, sometimes playing the flute, and they speak to each other. They describe the reactions of the cows, of the river, of the birds and so on. So, then one may think, well, this sounds just like Venugit, right? It sounds just like Venugit. So, you can be forgiven for thinking that, but actually it's not like Venugit at all. It seems like that, but the Bhav is something else. Very, very high. Why? In Venugit, it is of Purvarag. That means, the love that gopis have before they had the chance to meet intimately with Sri Krishna. Mm -hmm. But then, when the Rasalila, when the Rasalila came, then gopis met very closely with Sri Krishna. Evam parasvanga karavi mrishta snigdekchitu dham vilas ahasai rame rame sho prajasundri vi yatava kaswa pratibimba vibra maha In that Rasalila, <coughs> Krishna was uh, playing with Braj Gopis, embracing them, mm, glancing at them, very smiling at them very beautifully. Rame Rame Sho Prajasundri Bhi. And Yatavaka Swaprati Bimba Bibrama. He became like a child playing with his own reflection. This is very profound. One meaning is that if you put mirrors all around yourself, you see for how many mirrors are, there are, that's how many images there are of you. So in the same way, how many gopis were there in the Rasalila, that's how many Krishnas were there. So Yatava Swaprati Bimba Biprama. It was like a child playing with his own reflection. Another thing is that if you go on the street and you see a woman and you touch her, then the police will arrest you. Right? But, eh, why? Because that's another person. But if you touch your own reflection, then this is your, your image. So there, there's no, there can be no lust. So in the same way, though it looks like Krishna is embracing Braj Gopis here, Karabhimrista means that he's putting his left arm around the Gopis. And Tungi Vidri is playing Mardanga, and the other Gopis are dancing. And Krishna is doing the tariketa tariketa like this, reaching over and doing ta 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 ta, playing the the talon, the breast of Radhika for a joke. Then she's looking at him. <laughs> Snake deck to shut down and smiling and glancing at each other. Very beautiful pastimes are going on. But there's no lust at all in this. Because gopis are Krishna's own Swarup Shakti. The own energy of his Swarup has come out in the form of Braj Gopis. So there's no difference. Radha Krishna Aichi Sada Eki Swarup. Lila Rasa Aswadite Dari Dwirup. Radha Krishna one Swarup, but they have two bodies for the sake of tasting the rasa of their lila. So this, this is according to Siddhanta. But he is like a child playing with his reflection because Krishna is dancing 
and gopis are dancing in the same way. Oh, gopis are dancing and then Krishna is doing the same move. Sometimes Krishna is singing and then gopis are replying. Sometimes gopis are singing and Krishna is replying. So they are mirroring each other as they sing and dance. Joy joy pyaro kare soi mohi bhave bhave mohi joi soi soi kare pyare Radhika was a very bamyata, she has contrary mood. But now Radha ya bhavatastha chet jatuni sweda valapya kramat yunjanadri nikunja kunjra pate ni duta beda brahmam Chitraya Swayamam Varanze Adiha Brahmanda Ham Yodare Buyo Bi Navaraga Hingala Varai Singar Kayukriti. It was the last verse Ramananda Rai taught to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about Radha Krishna's pastimes. Radha Krishna are meeting in a beautiful kunja at Govardhan. And Krishna is playing like the intoxicated king of elephants. That means the king of elephants. No, he can do whatever he likes. He's Swachanda. He can do whatever he likes. No one can stop him. So Krishna is playing and doing whatever he likes. And Radhika was also becomes like an intoxicated elephant. Hmm? That means she's doing whatever, whatever she likes also. So Krishna is Nayaka. Nayaka means hero. But Nayaka, Nayaka, Naya means leading. So the Nayaka is the one who is leading the pastime. And Naika is the one who has been led by the Nayaka. Naya means leading. Nayati, he leads. Oh, but when Radhika's is the contrary mood has melted away slowly, like wax melting. Chita Jatuni, her heart is melting like wax, and all contrary mood is going away. Then she becomes submissive to Krishna, and Krishna is submissive to her. And then the rasa is expanding. Unlimitedly. Prasparo Vasibhava Atishai. So Jojo Ka Pyaro Kare. Whatever my lover does, then that is pleasing to me. And whatever is pleasing to me, my lover does that. Because now Nirdu Tabeda Brahman, their two hearts have melted and become one. So Jatava Kaswa Pratibimba Bibrama. They're playing like a child with own, with his own reflection. It's also like a reflection. Why? Because if there's a mirror you can see whether you're beautiful or not. So in the Rasalila, Sri Krishna can see, ah, oh, gopis and Radhika are so beautiful. He's amazed. Huh? But when he meets in the Kunj with Radhika, and then Radhika looks at him, Radhika is amazed seeing Krishna's beauty. So when Krishna sees the amazement in the eyes of Radhika, then this is like a mirror. Because Krishna thinks, oh, I know the gopis are very beautiful, but am I beautiful? I don't know. And then the way that Radhika looks at him, he, th he says, oh yes, I'm also beautiful. <laughs> so in this way, Radhika is like a mirror to Krishna by which he understands, yes, I am beautiful. Because the beauty of Radhika makes Krishna become mad. But the beauty of Krishna makes Radhika become more mad than Krishna. Even. So yata, kaswa, prata, brimba, vibrama. After Radhika and Krishna, they've experienced this such union of their hearts. Then after Rasalila, when they go home, this separation that takes place after the Rasalila is a million times more intense than the Purvarag of Venugit. Understand? Mm -hmm. So Yuga Gita is chapter 35, Venugit is chapter 21. Hmm? So a person can feel separation when they're falling in love, but they've never met. But that separation has to be have to be united by body, by mind, by heart, by pran, by soul, every pore of the skin is united with every pore of the skin of Radhika. Radha and Krishna are united like this. So then after that the separation is unbearable, intolerable. Oh, now this, then this Yugo Geet comes. In Vedu Geet, the gopis are lamenting. Alas, alas, we are not fortunate. The deer are fortunate because they are going into the forest and they are meeting with Krishna, but we cannot go because we have to hide everything from our parents. But the mood in Yugo Geet is, oh, these deer are very fortunate, this river is very fortunate, these trees are very fortunate, and we'll also be very fortunate, we should go at once. The brain has become so high, it's uncontrollable. And this is why, after this chapter, Krishna kills uh, Aristasur. 
and Shamakund and Radhakund are manifested. So not only do the gopis meet with Krishna at night for Rasalila, but Krishna arranges that they meet with him in the day also, Madhyan Lila, for Rasalila at Radhakund in the daytime, only Radhika's group there. So the situation is such that after the Rasalila and gopis went home, then their lives became split into two. The daytime was the only burning in the fire of separation, praying in separation, and then every night they would go and meet with Krishna in Rasa. But then something astonishing happened to their bhav. That is, that in the daytime, in their separation, they would see Krishna, a spurti of Krishna. And they felt as if they were meeting with him. But then the next moment, that spurti would disappear. And their hearts were broken. That is called Vipralamba Vispurti. An intense experience of Krishna's presence which is indistinguishable from his actual presence. Arising from Anurag. And when that Spurti disappears and separation becomes double. Then Braj Gopis, they become so bewildered. They think, oh, I was just meeting with Krishna. But then he disappeared. I wasn't really meeting with him. It was only a Spurti. And then they remembered last night when they went to the Rasalila and they thought, maybe that was a sporty as well. And I never went to the Rasalila. <laughs> maybe I'm going mad and I've never even met with Krishna once in my life. It was all my own sporty. <laughs> huh? So the bhav has come so high, now Krishna is desperate. I have to do something. I have to meet with them also in the day. So that stage of praying where the gopis even think that they have never met with Krishna. Then, uh, then this Yuga Gita comes. Like this. In this Yuga Geet, it reveals to us the whole day of the gopis. From the morning when Krishna leaves the village until the evening when he returns. So they speak about Jamuna and about cows three times. Because three times during the day, Krishna does the, with his cows the, um, the um, Gopan Lila. When the cows have to drink. They have to drink in the mid-morning. The cows drink again in the midday. And then again in the evening before they return. So actually, this Yoga Gita tells us the Astikala Lila. At least the daytime aspects of Astakali Lila are revealed through the madness of Gopi separation in Yuga Gita. So they're saying, When Sri Krishna takes his flute, he places his left cheek on his right shoulder like this. You see, because he's Tribanga. And he places the left cheek on the left shoulder like this. And then, hey, other. He offers the flute, puts the flute on his lips. And then, Komala Anguli Beer. He takes his very soft fingers. His fingers are so soft because he never did a day's work in his life. <laughs> He's a prince, completely spoiled. And he takes those soft fingers and he places those soft fingers on his foot and he tips his head. And then just about when he's about to play, he looks at his, fr boy, his coward friends, his suckers, and he moves his eyebrows just to say, <laughs> Wait until you hear this. <laughs> and then he begins to play. And when he plays, hmm? the demigods are in the sky, male and female, Devas and, and, and Devis, are there in the sky. Why? They parked there last night. Remember yesterday I was saying when Krishna returns, so they, the devotees listen to his ragas and they bow their head in shame, they can understand the raga and tao, and they offer arti to him. And so Krishna is standing there, he's delayed, and that's why his mother's wondering, why is my son late? So Krishna enters into the, the Nandagal, and then those wives of the demigods, 
They've fallen in love with Krishna. And the husbands, they're so embarrassed because they've also fallen in love with him. And they're thinking, if our wives see that we're attracted to him, then what will happen? Huh? So the demigods, they park in the sky at night because above Nandagaon, because they're feeling so much separation, they can't wait for him to come out again in the morning. So then when he comes out of the village in the morning with his cows and his friends, and then he takes his flute, looks at his friend, moves his eyebrows. Hmm? Then uh, all the demigoddesses and the demigods, they become stunned. They're having so many subtle bars in their body that the, the cloth of the demigoddesses, is, is the, the knots in their skirt and their underwear are coming undone automatically. And, the, and their braids are opening. People think that the demigods are showering flowers on Krishna. No, it's that the, that the demigods' wives are so amorously incited by Krishna's flute playing that their braids become open, just thinking of him, and then the flowers fall from their hair, and that's the flowers falling from the sky. Mm -hmm. Okay, they do shower flowers as also, but this is more, in Madhuras, this is the, uh, the idea. So then, gopis are saying, oh, this flute is very bad. Very bad. Why? Because, look how this flute is ordering Krishna around and making him serve her. That means Radhika is jealous of Krishna's flute. She's seeing that Krishna's flute is like a, another gopi, a naika, a heroine. And why is, why is he kissing her not kissing me? Just look at this flute. She's telling all the demigods, Oh, you should play music for me. She's telling the Jamuna river, Oh, turn round, because Jamuna was flowing this way, and when Krishna played his flute, then the Jamuna turned around the other way and made, made whirlpools. So she's so bossy, telling the demigods what to do, telling the Jamuna what to do. She's telling Krishna what to do. Oh, Krishna, I want to relax. So then Krishna, he puts out his bottom lip, and she relaxes on his bottom lip. And then Krishna, then she says, oh, massage me. And then so Krishna gets his fingers and gives her a massage. So in this way, Radhika is becoming jealous of the flute. And why is she putting so much stress on him? Hmm? He must be so heavy. Why? Hari Sakhi Ari Venu Yukta Topi Prakshaniya Sakhi Bi Radhika says, Oh Saki, this flute is so bad. He's very, very heavy and putting stress on Krishna. You know what? Look, look. When Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill, the mountain, he was standing up straight. But when he lifts his flute, he becomes Tribhanga, crooked. So she's putting so much stress on him. It's very bad. So just as a heroine becomes jealous of, an, of another heroine, here in the Yugal Gita, Radhika is cr criticizing the flute. This is the, one of the symptoms of Madanakya Mahabhav. So Madanakya Mahabhav actually only takes place in meeting. But, Sarva Bhavud Gamola Si Madano Yam Paraha Ladini Rajate Ladini Saro Radayam Eva Yasada Madanakim above is always in Radharani, always. But it is always Antraprakash shining inside and sometimes it becomes Bahiprakash. It starts to manifest outside. But it only manifests fully outside in meeting with Krishna. But sometimes in separation, Radhika is in Mohanakim above and a little bit of Madan can touch it. That is called Mada, Madana Angsa Sparshi Mohanakim Mahabhav. The Mohan separation mood, which is touched by a little Madan. So this is manifesting here. Because one of the symptoms of Madanakya or Mahabhav is becoming jealous of anything who is, has the, the good fortune to be close to Krishna. Braj Gopis, they're living in their homes and they're trying to hide their feelings. But now the brain has become so intense, that so it, it must overflow. And others will begin to notice and have suspicion about them. So he said, Ker, ker kuhun kasi kushi vai priti madupan Rahiman roki na roki jana sakala jahan Ker kuhun kasi kushi vai priti madupan There are seven things that you cannot hide. First thing, 
If you care about someone, but you pretend you don't, but by seeing your behavior, then uh, someone will figure out, oh, we'll have some attachment for that person. Ker kun, kun means blood. If you kill someone, oh, for many years you may escape, but one day someone will discover and they'll catch you. Ker kun, kasi. Kasi means coughing. If a person is they're pretending to be healthy, but they're sick, but they're <coughs> Their cough will come out and it will reveal their situation. So, Kerkun Kasi Kushi, Bayer, Bayer, enmity. You may pretend to be the friend of someone, but if you have enmity in, in, in your heart, after some time they'll notice it. Pretty, pretty love. If you are in love with someone, but you're hiding it, you'll be found out. And Madupan, Madupan means intoxication. If you're smoking ganja, or if you're taking alcohol or anything, you can pretend you are not. But you will be discovered. So, Kerkun Kasi Kosi Vai Priti Matupan, Rahim, Rahman, Roki Noraki, Jana Sakla Jan. One day everyone will know. So, in the same way, the frame of the group is there trying to hide it. But now it's becoming so strong. <laughs> now it's coming out in Yoga Geet. It becomes a very desperate situation. This is ultimately why Krishna being afraid that uh, there would be a scandal and it would be very difficult situation. Yogamaya understood his heart and he inspired Kamsamaraj to send Akrura. And then Akrura came to Vrindavan and took Krishna away. So that they would meet with him in separation and no one would suspect that they were so they were meeting with him. So this is a Jugal Geet. Braj Gopis are saying, oh criticizing the flute. This flute is so bad. Why? Because he's telling us, give up Dharma, give up Dharma. Lord Brahma, the Vedas explaining Dharma have come from four mouths of Lord Brahma. But you know it's the nature of the ordinary persons that they don't think so much for themselves. What everyone says, Vox Populi, what is the, 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 the opinion of people in society? They think this must be right because everyone says so. So Gopi said, ah, we are very simple, like that. So Brahma has spoken four Vedas from four mouths. But this flute has eight mouths. And from eight mouths he's saying, give up your Dharma, give up your Dharma. So we have to do it. So in Venu Gita, they're hiding. But here in Yugu Gita, they're trying to hide, but they cannot anymore because the frame is too intense and their determination, oh, we should just go, go to Krishna at once. Gopi say, you know that in ancient times, in the Puranas, it is said in the Puranas, we have heard from Purnamasi Devi, in ancient times there was a king, he was very wicked. When he was a boy, he used to kill his playmates for fun. And then when he grew up and he became the king, he said, all right, that's it. No more religion for anyone. Na yastavyam, na datavyam, na hutavyam, duja kochit. Itinya varanat dharma, beri goshe na sarvashaha. He told his servants, beat kettle drums everywhere and announce, no more jagyas, no more charity, no more the oblations of ghee. All dharma should be stopped. It was very wicked. So then the brahmanas, what did they do? The brahmanas said, we have to get rid of this person. So then by mantra they killed him and he died. Hmm? So gopis are saying, then in his next life, he was still wicked. He became even more wicked and more against Dharma in his next life. But be, due to embarrassment from the previous life, he changed his name. In his previous life, his name was Vain, Vain, right? Vain, Vena, Vena Maharaj. And in this life, he changed his name to Venu. <laughs> <laughs> and he's now singing everywhere. Oh, don't follow Dharma, don't follow Dharma, give up your Dharma. It's the same because you don't change from one life to the next. The samskars go with you. So gopis are criticizing Krishna's flute so much. Like this. So these are the bhavs of Srimad Bhagavatam. Without the association of Braj Rasik Vaishnavas, it is not possible to enter into them and realize them. So see, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he taught Sanatana Goswami Pad. Krishna Bhakti Janma Mool Hoi Sadhu Sangha. Prema Bhakti Janami Teno Punar Mukya Anga. The root cause 
of Krishna Bhakti is Sadhu Sangha. And even when a person attains praying, still Sadhu Sangha is the main cause of progress. Why? Prem, Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Rag, Anra. Prem is not the end. Prem is the beginning. Hmm? So Sadhu Sangha is necessary all the time. By which we can feel the heat of the paths which are there in Srimad Bhagavatam. And develop the samskars. And then when the person chants Harinam, that Harinam will take him to Braja. Parakiya bhave ati rasara ulas braja bina ihara anyatya nahibas. The highest joy is in the parakiya rasa, and it is not to be found anywhere, only in braja. And that braja can only be attained by raganuga bhakti, and that raganuga bhakti is rak anuga, anugatya mai, under guidance. Yeah. So in this way, we complete our kata on the glories of the Holy Name for this year. See Harinam Bhavu Ki Jai Gaur Premanande.